Hey, uh, Richard Miller again here with Facts for Working People. I just had a couple of comments that I wanted to make uh, today. I was um, uh, uh, reading in the papers this morning, also listening a little on the radio about Trump and Pence in Indiana <clears throat> and how they've made a deal with this, uh, uh, you know, Trump talks about himself being a great, the great deal maker. Uh, they've made a deal with this corporation uh, called Clearance. They make furn their furnace makers <coughs> in uh, Indiana. And um, they were going to shift their factory to Mexico, shift their uh, production to Mexico. And they backed off and they made a deal. And there, Trump and Pence are boasting about how wonderful this is, saving American jobs and what have you. And, um, of course, what they, from what I understand, is... Um, They've they've saved 400 of uh, yeah they're they're keeping a thousand and a thousand of the jobs so so they've saved some of them it's a sort of half deal or whatever but the point is you know if you look back at what Trump was saying when he was getting elected and we all can see now uh, uh, just that he surrounded himself by the very same people he savaged uh, uh, while he was getting a, a, a running for office but he said back then he said talking about all these incentives uh, for corporations. He was attacking the corporations uh, 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 and the incentives that the taxpayer gives them and government gives them and what have you. He said, it doesn't work, folks. That's not what they need. They have money. They want to go out. They want to move to another country. And because our politicians are so dumb, they want to sell their product to us and not have any retribution, not have any consequences. So all of that's over. That's what he said. Then, of course, it's not about politicians being dumb. But the fact is, he's done the very same thing. Uh, from what I was hit reading this morning, he, um, they've been offered incentives uh, by the state of Indiana uh, to stay, or to, they've, they've cut back on the amount of production they want to move. That meanwhile, there's a company down the road, actually, that's, at, that's moving production as well. So they've got in, uh, uh, economic in incentives. Uh, um, and I heard last night, uh, on the uh, report last night that was saying that Governor Pence is staying on as governor uh, and, until he can uh, 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 make these, basically hand over the taxpayer of Indiana money to the corporation in, to bribe them into staying. So it's the same old process going on. In fact, there is no way, uh, uh, as, as Mick Brooks pointed out on our blog the other day in his article, there's no way Trump is going to bring back those great those jobs, the old blue-collar manufacturing jobs that were the entry into the American dream and to the middle class for so many American workers, those days are over. They're over because of for global competition, because of um, new technology and, uh, and, and, and cheaper labor elsewhere. Capital will always find cheaper labor. And what's happened here is the corporation and the investors have gotten a deal. They blackmail the state and the taxpayer is going to pick it up. So even if it saves jobs... All that will do, uh, uh, will, they will shift. It's like I was listening to Richard Wolfe this morning. It's like shifting uh, musical chairs. Is that, is that th th they've kept these jobs, but it may well be the children of these very workers or the families of these wor very workers, them collectively, that are suffering. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul. What's important is the working class or a section of it will pay. They, Trump will not. The big business will not make the uh, capitalist class pay for, uh, uh, for this. It will be us that pay in one way or another. So they, they've shifted the burden. The interesting thing is that um, uh, Wolf was saying this morning too, the economist Richard Wolf was saying uh, about uh, how this company, uh, Carrier, uh, is, a, is a, uh, so it's owned by United Technologies. United Technologies is a defense corporation. It's a defense manufacturer. Now, he pointed out, which is so true, that um, as a defense manufacturer, it pretty much has just one customer, and that's the federal government. So you, he said that you think the federal government it has the ability to um, pressure, it has uh, the tremendous ability to pressure a United Technologies to pressure its subsidiary or its, uh, the company it owns uh, to keep those jobs in the United States. But it will not. And uh, this is the crux of the matter. The state or the government... Uh, what, that's what we're talking about here, is not a uh, is not a an abstract thing. It's not a uh, a, a formation, a social. It's not there as a sort of divine intervention. It's not, it's not a, a social formation that's devoid of class content. It's a capitalist government. The two major parties in this 
uh, um, country and uh, fulfill those slots in government uh, uh, are, are major capitalist parties, big business parties. They're not the party of the shopkeeper and the, the liquor store owner and the gas station owner, if, it, if an individual owner does own such things. Uh, uh, they're the party parties and the candidate and the politicians of big business. As Marx pointed out, the, the state is but the, merely the executive board of the bourgeoisie or of the capitalist class as a whole. Uh, that's, that's who they are. So there's no way that the state is going to go after those inbe- investors uh, uh, that own that corporation. So uh, 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 um, the other thing about this whole question is that, you know, it's sort of like uh, it, uh, negotiations, uh, in contract negotiations, what the bosses are going to do here. They, bla- they blackmailed, they threatened to move. They did it in, in the Detroit strike, uh, the um, uh, uh, Boeing recently, a couple of years ago, last year or the year before, where they threatened to move to the south. Uh, Boeing did uh, if if the if the workers up there in Washington State didn't uh, d- uh, didn't back down and uh, and didn't accept concessions. This is economic terrorism that they apply. We should always use those words on the job. There's economic terror- terrorism goes on day in day out. You can commit violence against people in many ways. You can take away their standard of living, their homes. That's what they did in the crash. They committed mass violence against the American people. Uh, 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 in, during the, 19, the 2008 subprime collapse and what followed. So they, they always use this blackmail. They did it when there was a battle between Arlington, Texas and Ypsilanti, Michigan over a, a factory with the two, the two townships, the two areas, trying desperately to offer concessions, taxes, whatever they could to the corporation in order to attract the jobs. And you get blackmailed and in the end they close the plants anyway. So the employers here now are doing the same thing that they always do. So they'll, they'll, and it's very much like the trade union leaders. When the bosses are come, come at them in negotiation time, they come at them with massive cuts, cut this, cut that, eliminate this. The union leaders go to the table with a platform of concessions. We know we're going to have to give up. They, they, they push them uh, uh, to, to make some less aggressive concessions. The, the, the workers end up getting screwed slightly less than the opening uh, uh, salvo from the bosses. And the, the union leaders who don't have to work under these contracts uh, themselves, uh, then they call it a victory. Oh yes, look, well, we won uh, less concessions than the bosses wanted. And of course, in, in most cases, it's the new hires that get screwed. They're very easy to go after for the trade union leadership because they don't get to vote on the contract that they're going to have to work work under when they get in. Workers are divided. The new hires blame the union. Why didn't the union fight? How come they let this happen? The, the solidarity is harder to build. It's a totally disastrous situation. And that's exactly what's happening here. If they've saved these jobs, there was no mention of them, the corporation opening the books. Let's see the profits. Profits are not just dis- funny, isn't it? The life... Life and breath of this society that we live under is profits, but it's not mentioned. No, open the books. Let's see what profits have been made. Nobody's mentioning it. Trade union leaders should men- mention it. But nobody's mentioned it. So they're p- doing a similar things that the um, trade union uh, leadership do during contract time. And they're, they're going to do it all through Trump's uh, uh, hopefully very limited uh, um, administration. We'll see what happens. No, no bourgeois election is legitimate. This one is one of the most... Uh, one of the least legitimate uh, since I've been in this country anyway. But the other thing I want you to touch on um, is the question of the voters themselves. I mean, I remember women were crying in particular. A number of women I knew were crying the day after this misogynist got elected. And let's face it, he's a pimp. He's never worked. Uh, uh, He's a disgusting human being. This is a human being that called for a woman to be punished if she has an abortion but then boasts, and you know very d- damn well his boast was was not bravado, boasts that he can grab their crotches, he can kiss them against their will when he wants to because he has money, that's what money does, it's social power, and who presently has 13 or so women filing uh, sexual harassment and sort of rape charges and all sorts of stuff against him. Despicable character. But the thing is, is we have to be, there's a lot of to be optimistic about, it's here, now, and also, we shouldn't underestimate, I mean, I can't imagine uh, in a way, way how a woman could vote for him, uh, uh, or any worker really, but the alternative wasn't much better at all, it could in fact have been worse, she's a much more conscious, astute 
uh, a representative of the US capitalist class. But either way, there was no choice for the American working people here. I voted for Stein and the Greens. But elect, we never won much from elections anyway. But the thing is, is that in, in relation to the voters, um, there's, I'm not talking here about the white nationalists, Nazis, Klan, and other scum that, 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 that support this guy and that he's whipped into a frenzy. It's, 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 it's nauseating to hear him talk about we have to come together when his whole platform was about dividing people, dividing people up along all sorts of lines. Um, but there's that element and in fact, they're going to be very upset with him because he's already tr backtracked on a lot of his things. He's not busting Hillary and all this, that and the other. Uh, 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 so that element is going to be very upset with him because he's whipped them into frenzy and he's going to have to deal with them. I used to think at one point that somebody would take him out in the past. That's happened in this country. Uh, um, uh, but if any, if any might, it might be one of those ideological driven Nazis, uh, white nationalist types. But then there's those voters they pointed out in the Midwest, the Roosevelt voters. Um, there's a bit of a different thing, a bit of a different thing there, because um, while uh, at the same time we have to look at, firstly, he didn't win the popular vote. Uh, 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 I don't know, some 60, 70, 80 million people never voted at all. People are just disgusted with it all. But those voters that did, and, and I've got connections and friends in the Midwest, worked in industry, worked in the Rust Belt jobs, and you, you look at the auto now, even in a union, you're driven down to 12 13 $14 an hour, I think $10 an hour. I think the average wage in UAW workplaces is about $15 an hour. And so... You can see how desperate people, uh, uh, in my opinion, I don't, I can't, I, I, I don't support the fact that they voted for Trump. But there's a difference there. People, uh, you can't st uh, treat consciousness as a static thing. And in desperate times, people do desperate things. Um, some of my co-workers in the, I'm a public sector worker. They're very well paid by American standards today. They're socialist jobs, really, by American standards today. And. Um, even by European standards, some of them voted for Trump. Some of them are NRA types. Uh, they, their whole obsession with thinking that they can uh, change this, you know, the, the gun and all of that. And, and uh, uh, Saddam Hussein had an army, by the way, in guns. You can, if you want to take on the state, you have got to have a different mentality than that. And but some of them voted for. Um, for uh, uh, Trump, and it's pretty disgusting, it's just plain stupidity. Uh, the, the, he's coming after the public sector big time. But back to those um, those that did, I mean, like there was those, and I think it was Macomb County in Michigan, they voted for, it's not just purely a racial question like some people like to uh, whip it up as. Um, they voted for Obama against uh, the Mormon fella, um, I forget his name now, another millionaire, a hedge fund guy, capital management co company. Uh, um, they voted against, they voted for Obama against him. They voted for Trump in this situation. They mostly Democratic, so many of them. But you know, like I say, you can't look at this uh, from a moral question. I mean, I believe this, and I believe all history shows it, that the humans are, 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 are predominantly, we collective uh, creatures. We, we, it, we have advanced through collective activity. We built unions because we saw it advanced our self-interest. That's what we are in the main. Society has moved forward not through individual action but through collective action. We're capable through the, those struggles and through that history of great sacrifice. We've only got, I was just got a thing from Doctors Without Borders today and the people that go abroad and they're in war zones and helping, just all through history, we see the great sacrifice, the struggles to build unions in this country. So we're capable of those things, but we can all also be capable, capable under different objective conditions of, of, um, of uh, great brutality and, uh, and, uh, and that sort of thing, violence. I mean, that also, look at what's happening in the Middle East. Um, so the thing is for me, uh, uh, um, um, is that is that when those doors are closed, when that un if had the trade union leadership, for an example, who do have the structure and the power to do it, had there been an alternative there, a real alternative, those workers would have taken it. Workers along religious, racial, gender lines, with a, 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 for, uh, having an alternative against austerity, that fought for jobs, that fought for social services in a real way, had a real class orientation, those workers would have joined it. In, 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 in other t when those roads are blocked, it's just like as workers are moving forward, the unit is strong and everything else, but when those roads are blocked, then it can fall into these divisive, 
it's sorry, I'd you know, like both our kids to eat, but if it's a choice, I'm going to defend mine. It those, that solidarity can break down. So I just also wanted to say, just in terms about Wolf's, uh, a couple of things that, <clears throat> that Wolf left out to Wolf. He talked about the, how uh, uh, the, the, the issue is the system. One way or another, they are going to make the working class pay, one way or another. That's just the history of capitalism. They'll pay women less. They'll pay blacks less. They'll pay uh, uh, immigrants less. They will, will div it's one section of the working class or other that they will prey upon more than to try to divide us, to weaken us. And when I was growing up in England, before the people of color came, it, the Irish were the, the prime, well, their own working class, but all the Irish of, of all foreigners were the most degraded and dehumanized uh, in British history. Uh, and, uh, and also in terms of jobs, they did all the, they were a lot in, in many ways, uh, like the Latinos and pre predominantly Mexicans are that come here. They, were, they came into England and did a lot of the dirty work, got attacked racially for it, and what have you. So um, what, what Wolf leaves out is the question is when he's talking about the state, the government, uh, uh, and he, I believe he's a, he's a Marxist, and he, a Marxist economist, but clearly politically uh, um, he, le he left out the qu this question of the state because the, our government will not, will not force uh, 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 um, this company to, to, to take less profits. Um, they will at times nationalize an industry, which is what we should be calling for, the public ownership of that corporation, and, uh, and run democratically under workers' control and management. All of the huge, all of the big sectors of the economy <clears throat> should be taken over and run publicly under workers' control and management. And there's plenty of precedents for that. Uh, and in, in Argentina, there's still factories that are producing that I believe are still uh, run and owned by the workers. So he leaves that out and, and, and doesn't raise the fact that we have to have a political party of our own. As, as we've written on this blog many times, we have to build a movement, a mass movement that can fight back against auster austerity and out of that arise a, a, a working class party. Maybe it'll be the Green Party. I'm in the Green Party. I don't know how long I'll be in the Green Party. It's got a very heavily petty bourgeois influence in it. It doesn't orient to the working class in the main. But one way or another, that has to happen. The building of a movement uh, uh, and uh, and a political party, independent workers party, out of that out of that movement. And the fact is, as I've, I say uh, uh, when we write about on this blog, is the blame for those workers, the white workers up in the Midwest, that out of desperation, disgust at voting Democratic, voting for Dukakis, voting for Mondale, voting for these, the other uh, party, uh, uh, have taken, uh, uh, voted for this who, uh, guy who has attacked all the status quo. He's very quickly moved to the status quo. Um, we can call them stupid. We can call them foolish. Whatever we want to call them, but but. But the fact is, those workers had the, la had the labor leadership, and we, we must not leave out, as Wolf has, and as a lot of leftists do, uh, 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 and critics do, the role of the labor leadership. They had the alternative, they had the opportunity to, to build an alternative. Had there been an alternative, workers would have turned to it. Instead, they offered Hillary Clinton. They offer no alternative whatsoever. Uh, even after this victory, you've got the leader of the UAW, Williams. He's, he, they're all trying to now beg favors from Trump. Uh, 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 Williams in the UAW says, well, just help us out on NAFTA. Others will all be trying to make deals. They're a disgrace in the way they've dealt with this. They're a disgrace in the way they've responded to the, uh, the, the, the added a pressure and brutality and conditions that that the that people of color live under the prisons, the incarceration rate, the shooting of, of folks, uh, and what have you. Just uh, West Virginia is a basket case. Where are the trade union leaders on this? So they could have uh, uh, provided an alternative. Wolf should have pointed them out. Wolf should have should have also made it very clear that the state, the federal government, will not, under any conditions. Uh, uh, um, uh, defend these workers uh, uh, in this in this plant, or force a corporation or the investors. They'll simply take their money uh, elsewhere, and that's the another aspect of capital. We don't own capital. We don't own the wealth we create, uh, um, and we don't own, own technology. What, as Mick Brooks pointed the other day in our blog, pointed out the new technology is one of the major reasons for the lack of uh, industrial jobs because they can produce um, as much today 
with a third or a quarter of the work it's manufacturing as they did in 1948 or 1950. Technology is a good thing. It's a question of who owns the technology. If we own technology, uh, uh, then it can be used to create more leisure time. We could work 20 hour weeks. Uh, uh, we could spend more time not just in, we don't control the workplace and we don't direct the work. We don't control the wealth we produce. We don't allocate it. We don't participate in any of that. That's done, uh, the capitalist class does that through their institutions. But if we control technology, it can give us more leisure time. Uh, uh, we can participate then in the organization and the structure of work also in the allocation uh, uh, under a demo so democratic socialist economy and society, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, direct also the allocation of that wealth, where we produce things, where we build, where we, uh, how we interact with nature and, and everything else. So uh, technology is a good thing. It's simply a question of who owns the technology. And lastly, I think it's important for me uh, to, uh, uh, well, I was going to say that I think that we're going to see uh, what Trump is going to do is, is and, and this situation has caused, is I think there'll be massive protests. It will shift the American working class to the left. Uh, people will, the working class will fight back. It will not, because of the absence of leadership and particularly the role uh, the, the trade union leadership plays in cooperating with the ruling class uh, in this country. And actually, internationally, we've seen it with Syriza and the, the Europeans. And it's the same problem. Uh, uh, the, the movement, the struggle to build a movement and to build a party will be not smooth. There will be contradictions in it. There will be lulls. There will be times when we push back and division increases. But I think that uh, uh, overall, if we look at history, uh, uh, when the working class moves into struggle, we move to overcome these social divisions that used to divide us. And, and that's what we will do. And at some point, new leadership will emerge in the trade unions. It's our responsibility to do that there. New leadership will emerge in the working class. And out of all struggle, great lessons are learned. So I'm very optimistic about that. But nothing is guaranteed. Time is short. And as we've written on this blog many times, we believe that... Uh, uh, when I say time is short, we're talking of decades, not centuries, is that the capitalism will destroy life as we know it on this planet. The environment is a victim also of the market economy. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks.